I'm interested in looking at some data about the Spurs basketball team in the 2012-2013 uh, season. I was able to find this web page. It's got information about it. Scrolling down, notice they're providing all kinds of statistics here. The ones that I'm going to be particularly interested in are those that are showing in this particular table. Uh, the first thing that I'll be looking at is the total points gained during the season and the total number of personal fouls. Uh, during the season, but there will be some other things that I'll ask you to do in your homework assignment. So the idea is to uh, come in here and uh, and just highlight that data, uh, copy it, and uh, I'll see if I can't paste that into a spreadsheet and see what happens. Here's the spreadsheet. Um, and it appears that it seems to be handling things okay. It, uh, that was comma delimited data here, and it, uh, I was able to just copy it from the web page and drop it into uh, to this particular spreadsheet. So now I'd like to save that spreadsheet uh, file. I'm going to save that spreadsheet as I'll call it Spurs. I'll call it Spurs with the lowercase. Spurs, and I want to save it as a particular type of file. Uh, R seems to handle comma separated files quite well. Uh, so I'm going to save that as a comma separated file. I've already built a place for this to be in documents got a subfolder called Spurs, so that's where I'm going to, uh, to, to save it. I'm saving this in the location, uh, will document Spurs, and I've given it the name Spurs. And I'm going to save that as a comma separated file, and I'm going to choose the defaults uh, that are there. Let's just look with the, the spreadsheet software. Um, file. Let me just open that document and see if it seems to be handling things right. Things look good. So I've got this comma separated file uh, that's available there. Let's take a look at R for a minute. Here I've started R. I've already looked to see what my my current working directory is. So I used a command called get wd or get working directory, open parentheses, close parentheses with nothing in there, and it tells me what the current working directory is. Now, <clears throat> that's not where I want to be, so I'm going to use a command called set working directory, and use the same kind of syntax that uh, my operating system is using. If you're using Windows or Mac, then this uh, then in Windows, you're probably going to have a C colon and you'll use backslashes instead of forward slashes. You need to operate in the operating system that you're in. I'm in a Linux environment here, so that's what I'm getting. Uh, I want to be in Documents. Uh, Spurs is the folder that that's in. Notice that all of those are enclosed in parentheses. Okay, now when I return and ask to get the working directory, then notice that uh, it has now changed. So there's where the working directory is. Um, at this point now we can use a command called uh, list.files, open parentheses, close parentheses, and it will list all the files that are there. There's only one in that particular folder at the present time. That was the Spurs uh, folder. Now, so what we've done here is we went to a web page, we grabbed some data, we pulled that data into a spreadsheet, we saved that spreadsheet as a comma separated file, and uh, now we want to get that spreadsheet information into R. We're going to do that with a command called read dot comma separated variable and give the name of that file. And in fact, you can take advantage of things like, uh, since we've already uh, listed the files that are there, I can copy that and uh, 
just paste that name into here. Okay, or you, of course you can type it out. So we're reading a comma separated variable. There are some other things that we want to say here. Uh, it does have a header, so we want to say header is equal to t capital T for true. So we are, are including a header here. And so at that point, R just printed out that data. That's what we said to do is go and read that data. So it just read it and printed it to the screen. What we really would need to do is take that data and instead of just reading it to the screen, we need to store it as an object in R. So we're going to say, I'm going to name the object spur. And uh, here we ought to call it spurs. Spurs. And then I'm reading this file called spurs, and it's going to be put in this object called spurs. Yeah, they didn't have to have the same name there. They could have been different names. Now, anytime that I look at spurs, there it is. If I looked at the names of spurs, it will tell me what the heading names are. And there's a, there are the heading names. Now, at this point, I need to go back to the web page to find out that PF stands for personal fouls and PTS stands for uh, the total points during the season. Um, I can do things like this. I can ask for spurs dollar sign PF. Notice that this is case sensitive, so I need a capital PF, and that will show me all of, of uh, the total number of personal fouls for each player uh, in order. Uh, similarly, I could use this command spurs dollar sign, uh, what's the name of that other variable? PTS. Capital PT, capital P, capital T, <laughs> capital S, and that shows me that the total points for each of the players in that order. So uh, we can now do a plot, which is going to be a plat scatter plot. Let's think of spurs, uh, the, the uh, personal fouls, as predicting the number of uh, points. That are earned. Now, I'm going to change this in just a minute, but you'll see that it produces that particular chart. Notice that the names here were just the names that we were using for the X and, and uh, Y components there. Um, we can do much better with this particular graph. Here are some things that we can do. Uh, it might be nice to put an X label on there. Uh, remember, the X label was going to be the personal fouls. And we could put a Y label, and that was uh, total points per season. This season. And notice that that stuff is in parentheses. We can also put a main M A I N header on here. And it's going to be the 2012-2013 season. Spurs season. Okay. Now when we put those things in, the graph looks uh, about like that. Uh, there are a bunch of other commands that we can do to improve that. We can put some color on these points and and make the colors, make the points different shapes. We'll learn some more details about that in another video. Okay, now notice some interesting things as you look at that. Other than these two outliers up here, there seems to be that the personal fouls are in fact a pretty good predictor of the total number of points in the season. Now, now, the personal fouls is not causing the total number of points in the season. There is undoubtedly a confounding variable here, and that's some of the things that you're going to look at in the assign in your written assignment. Okay, good luck.